Welcome to Evangelistic Outreach Ministries. The fields are white, all ready to harvest. Oh, For over half a century, the Evangelistic Outreach team has traveled across the street, about the nation, and around the world with the gospel message. We're dedicated to the vision of our late founder, Dr. Calvin Evans, to reach the unreached for Jesus Christ. May the love of Christ touch you, and may His Word teach you today on Evangelistic Outreach. Well, thank you for joining us on the program today. We're so excited about sharing the message with you and some wonderful music. We appreciate you giving your time each week to join us right here on the program. And I hope you'll tell others about Evangelistic Outreach. Encourage them to tune in as well. But right now, let's start things off with prayer. Father, thank you again for this privilege today to share the gospel of the Lord Jesus Christ. I pray that as we lift you up, that you'll touch the hearts of individuals that are away from you and those that need encouragement. I'm so glad that you care about everything that we're going through. And Lord, I ask today that you would anoint the precious singing as it goes out and the message. Lord, may it be seasoned with the power of the Spirit. You know exactly every individual that has joined us in worship today, and you know what their needs are. So speak to their heart, Lord. Encourage them, and especially if they're away from you, may this be the time that you touch their heart and they'll see their need of a Savior and that they'll repent of their sins and accept Christ as their Savior. We love you, Lord. Thank you for being so good to us. Thank you for the powerful meetings we've been in all year long. And Lord, what you're going to do again this week. We praise you for it because we trust you with all things. So bless us now today we pray in Jesus' name. Amen.
Well, we always love being able to share a free gift offer every month. We have a new gift offer monthly, and we do not charge for shipping fees, handling charges, or administrative costs. We're just glad to be able to share these gift offers to be a help and a blessing to you. And this month's gift offer is special, considering the fact that we have the Great Spring Jubilee coming up in May. It is one of the largest meetings that we're in all year long, and we're looking so forward to that. And on this gift offer, we have singing by the Blythe family. And they'll be joining us in Spring Jubilee this year. I thank those of you that's been praying for the Jubilee. We are looking so forward to, to God doing great things there again this year. My, how the Lord has blessed that meeting for years now. And we love being able to worship together with our friends. So if you need more information about it, just feel free to contact us. But if you like that free gift offer, whatever it takes is the title of it. Uh, there's a message from myself, How to Survive a Lion's Attack, and, uh, and also a message by Brian singing by the Blythe family. I hope that you'll contact us for yours today. It is available on DVD or CD, whichever you prefer. We'll be sure to send it right out to you. Thank you for your special love gifts for the Spring Jubilee. This is a major undertaking for the ministry, but over the past several years, God has allowed us to conduct this, this meeting and not even have to receive offerings. We'd love to do that again because number one, it's not offensive to the unsaved that's there. And number two, we can spend our entire time in worship. So I hope you'll pray about spend, uh, sending a special gift or being able to participate in the Spring Jubilee. The last Sunday of this month, we'll have a special prayer and planning meeting at 2 o'clock for the Spring Jubilee. That will be at the Rubyville Community Church where I pastor and Brian's the associate pastor and we love for your church to be there for a time of prayer and we'll also be getting everything organized for the final few days leading up to Jubilee. So thank you for praying for this ministry. Thank you for helping us. We do appreciate you so much. Speaking of meetings, on this coming Thursday night, I will be privileged to be at the Silver Creek Community Church at Crum, West Virginia, one night only. I'd love to worship with friends in that area. It's been a while since I've been right in that immediate area, so I hope you'll come and join us in service there at 7 o'clock this coming Thursday night. Right now, let's join the message for today. I want you to turn to Daniel chapter 6, or they can put that up, the 22nd verse. I'm not going to read the entire 6th chapter. And to just let you know a little bit about what God has placed on my heart, I'm going to read one verse. You know what happens in Daniel 6. Uh, Daniel has now grown to a position of respect, uh, even among the ruler of the land. The king respects him. And you, you know, you... You see God do enough, and you see God touch enough lives, pretty soon people will start respecting you for believing God. And that's exactly what happened. He was living in an evil, evil place, but God used him in the middle of evilness to be a light to those people, and he gained respect. Well, the other leaders, the other counselors, the other presidents, they didn't like what was happening. So they said, we've got to do something with Daniel. And we know a little bit about Daniel. They knew about his lifestyle. They knew, they knew that he was going to turn toward Jerusalem and pray every day. So they go to the king and they really set a trap for him. They said, king, would you send out a decree that for the next 30 days, that if any man would ask anything of any man or of any God, that if they would do that, that they should be cast into the lion's den. Amen. Well, he signed the decree. The word comes to Daniel, and they, they let him know what the decree is. He has no misunderstanding about it. He knows that if he turns, if he prays, he's going to be cast in the lion's den. Well, now the king is in a terrible place because Daniel has prayed not once, but three times a day. He just kept coming to God. And after that, he kept coming to the Lord. They come and said, now look, Daniel, this one that you promoted, he's now going against your decree. What are you going to do? The king said, I've got to keep my word. He's got to be cast in the lion's den. But that night, 
The king didn't ask for his musicians to come. He didn't ask for anything to soothe him. He couldn't sleep all night long. He couldn't wait until the next day to go and speak to Daniel. And when he cries out to Daniel, he wants to know if he's there. Has any harm come to him? And this is part of the reply from Daniel in the 22nd verse when he when he tells the king, my God has sent his angel and has shut the lion's mouths that they have not hurt me for as much as before him innocency was found in me and also before thee, O king, I have done no hurt. Thank you, you can be seated. So here's the situation. He is in a lion's den and he's facing the lions. I get a text one day from a dear pastor friend of mine, Doug Tackett. He's run a meeting that Brian and I are part of in the springtime in Northern Ohio, a cooperative meeting for several years. This will be his last year of running that meeting. And in that, he said, I'm preparing a sermon on shutting the lion's mouth. And he said, do you have any thoughts or any ideas about shutting the lion's mouth? And I said, well, I've got a few things. I'll get it together. I'll send it to you. And he said, really, what's been on my heart is what do you do when you're faced with a lion? How do you survive a lion's attack? Do I have your attention? I think that's a reasonable question. Now, here's the situation. See, when we come to church, and I I often hear people say, you know, some people, they think that theologically they've grown so much that uh, they're they're really going to line people out when they say anything. uh, And, well, you know the story, don't you? And I preached one time, and I preached out of 1 Peter chapter 5, verse 8. You know it well. Be sober and vigilant for your adversary as a roaring lion walketh about seeking whom he may devour. And I said, uh, the devil is likened to a roaring lion. And they said, oh no, that says as a roaring lion. We know the roaring lion, that's the Lord. Well, the Lord is the lion of the tribe of Judah, but the devil is a lion that is going to and fro in this earth trying to attack us. It was the lion that came against, against Daniel when he was in the lion's den. And Daniel had to know what to do when he faced a lion. So here's the situation. Would you agree with me? I don't think that I'd have to look very far to say that there are people right here tonight that you are under the attack of the devil himself. And if you have lived for God very long, you know what it is to face the lion. Because the lion wants to attack anything that is good. If you tell me I've never fought the lion, that tells me you've never done anything for God. But if you do anything for the Lord, it won't take long for the devil to come against you. He wants to fight every person, every church, every denomination, every group of people that stands for God and stands for what's right. The devil will challenge you face to face. In fact, if you check the scripture, there's about nine references to roaring lion and almost every incident, it refers to the wicked attacking the righteous. Let's, let's understand this. The devil hates you. And the devil hates me. And he hates singers like we've heard tonight, singers like you'll hear this week, Preachers like you'll hear because they are going to tell people about his devices and how to approach the adversary because he wants you to live in torment. He wants you to live in fear. He wants you to live as though he has conquered and he has won. So, how do you survive a lion's attack? Can I give you a few things? Three of you want to hear. Can I give you a few things? This is audience participation tonight, if you're just catching on. I've done this long enough to know when I'm doing good, not so good. If I'm not doing so good, I'll go to the room. (laughs) We, We know that he comes against us. What do we do? Well, one thing is, they say that if you're ever attacked or face to face with a lion, the first thing you ought to do is stand your ground. Whatever you do, Do not 
give territory to the lion. The best thing you can do is let the lion know you are not a threat to me, I am a threat to you. Somehow we got this thing turned around that we feel like we're the one that is defeated all the time. But may I remind you, greater is he that is in you than he that is in the world. There is a prince and power of the air, but we know the one that has all authority over him. And in the name of Jesus, we can come against him and we know that he cannot win. Stand your ground. Number two. I'm going to go quick. Not only stand your ground by taking charge and letting him know, but number two, never turn around. Don't turn your back even on a skinny lion. Don't turn your back on a lion. He knows he has authority then and he will use that against you. Never turn around. And whatever you do, if you do anything and you have to move any way, you you move sideways. Never go back. You do have this mic on, don't you? I thought I came to preach to people tonight. You never go back. Don't give up territory. Am I the only one that is tired of seeing the church give up territory? We keep giving up and giving up And giving up, we gave away prayer in our school and not enough was said. We gave away the Ten Commandments and took them off of every building in the nation just about. We've given away prayer to the fact that we no longer want to believe God for who he is. We've given away the spirit of worship in our churches. We've given away to this convenience and that convenience and we keep giving in and giving in. All we're doing is turning back. Let me tell you, There's nothing to go back to. Everything God has for us is ahead of us. It's not behind us. Never turn around. Never give up ground. And second of all, never run. If you run when you're faced with a lion, the only difference is you're going to die tired. You never run, never retreat to a thicket. They say never, ever climb a tree. I know a lot of people out on a limb. (laughs) Never climb a tree. They say the best thing you can do is move forward and get in the open. Why? The devil hates when you're out in the open. When you're in the open, he feels exposed. See, he loves to work behind the scenes. The lion loves not to be seen, and he doesn't like to be out in the open. That's why you're here tonight. You know what we're here for? We've come publicly tonight to declare the fact there is one King of kings and one Lord of lords, and he has ruled and conquered every enemy that there is, even the enemy of death. So now you're face to face with him. What are you going to do with him? Well, first of all, whatever you do, if you're face to face with a lion, don't point at it. Don't point at it. Well, that's, maybe I shouldn't say it. Chris, will you have me back tomorrow night if I say it? That's 80% of the church services I go to. I listen to people, they call them testimonies, but about 80% of them is bragging on the devil. Pointing out what the devil done. A lot of you right now, you're sitting there saying, boy, I sure would love to have church, but I'm so tired. I'm so this, I'm so that. Well, I've drove several hours today. But I've come to have church. Don't point him out. Preacher, whatever you do, don't preach on sin. Don't let people know how that he works. Don't let him know his device. Whatever you do, don't point him out. And whatever you do, don't make eye contact. They say if you come face to face with a lion, the best thing you can do is turn sideways and try to catch the view of the lion out of your peripheral vision. But don't make eye contact. 
because he can read the fear in you. See, it's not a fair fight. It's not. When you come up against a lion, it's never a fair fight. They can sense your fear, and they can also sense your fear by looking into your eyes, and there's a reason they target your eyes because when they do attack, they go for the head and they go for the eyes. Always. The devil wants what's in your head. Let this mind be in you which was also in Christ Jesus. He goes after your mind and he'll attack your eyes. He'll let you see things that you ought not see. He'll put you at the right place because those are images in your mind that even at the moments of some of the greatest grace and glory of God in all of your life, he'll bring those things back. So you look from the peripheral vision. What are you looking for? You're watching its tail because it's sizing you up. Do you know that you can know the very moment that a lion's ready to attack you? If a lion's tail is slowly moving side to side, if it's going from one side to the other, that means the lion is threatened by you. But if the lion's tail stops going side to side and its tail stiffens, that means you be assured he knows that he has threatened you and now he's going to hunt you. He's coming to you. So out of your peripheral vision, you see him. His tail is now stiffened. He's used everything that he can to try to convince you that, that, that somehow you're already defeated and to be filled with fear and he's getting ready to attack. Three things you got to do. You ready for it? Number one, when you see his tail stiffen, raise your arms, wave your hands, and so help me, I can't make this up. If you check any manual you want on what to do when a lion attacks, it says raise your arms, wave your hands, and shout your head off. It's exactly what it says. Raise your arms, wave your hands, and shout your head off. <laughs> oh, it gets better. It gets better. You rest assured, sometimes he'll start to back off when you shout and you raise your hands and you wave your arm. No wonder the devil's winning so much because we can't get to the place where we rise above how we feel and what we think. The truth of the matter is it doesn't matter how you feel tonight. God is still God. He is still King of kings and Lord of lords. You say, well, when God does something for me, I'll praise him. God's already done enough for every one of us. He's given us life and health and breath and he saved our soul. Do you remember when God picked you up out of the miry clay, set your feet on the solid rock, put a song in your mouth? Do you remember that? Why you're on your way to heaven? You don't have to go to hell. You've got every right to raise your hands and your arms and shout to the king of glory and say, Lord, because of you, I praise your name. So now he says, I'm not afraid of your shout. And he attacks anyway. There's some things you need to be prayerful, prepared for. Number one, he will roar. Number two, when he roars, the ground will shake beneath you. They roar at such low decibels that the earth will vibrate beneath you. Have you ever felt like the devil is attacking you and the ground you're standing on and everything you stood for is shaking beneath your feet? He's coming toward you. He's going to jump. He's going to run. They run at a speed of 50 miles per hour. When he jumps, he's going for your head. But when he goes for your head, that's your opportunity. You size him up. You see where he's coming. 
And they said, if you have anything in your hand, hit him with it. You hit him in the head and you hit him in the eye. And you keep hitting him. He'll keep coming, but you keep hitting him. You think you're not doing any good, but he's not used to anything or anybody coming against him. But suddenly when someone busts him up against the side of the head, do you know what happened when he came to Jesus? Three times he attacked him when he tempted him. All three times Jesus hit him with the word. It is written. It is written. It is written. I'm telling you, when you hit the lion with the word of God, he can't stand it. Can't take it. We hope the sermon and the singing were a blessing to you today. One final reminder, Calvin Ray will be in service this week on Thursday evening at Silver Creek Church in Crum, West Virginia. He is so looking forward to being down there. And if you're in that area, he would love to worship with you. So again, this Thursday night at the Silver Creek Church in Crum, West Virginia. Join Calvin Ray Evans for a tremendous time in the Lord. And also the Spring Jubilee, it'll be here before you know it. And as we leave the air today, here's the announcer to give you more information about the upcoming Spring Jubilee. The 26th Spring Jubilee is set for May 13th through the 17th to the Scioto County Fairgrounds in Lucasville, Ohio. Host evangelists Calvin Ray Evans and Brian Baer will welcome Karen Peck in New River, the Yates family, the Bly family, 11th Hour, and Mike Blanton and Evidence. The Spring Jubilee Choir will also sing nightly. Services begin at 7 p.m. and admission is free. For more information, call 800-767-8713 or visit calvinevans.org. Thank you for joining us today on Evangelistic Outreach Ministries. The fields are white, all ready to harvest. For more information about this ministry, contact us at Evangelistic Outreach Ministries, 299 Ohio Avenue, New Boston, Ohio, 45662, or toll free at 800-767-8713. You can also visit us online at calvinevans.org.